Yo, welcome to the long and short. It's your boy Maestro. Thanks for tuning in. In this video series, we're going to do things a little bit different. Here, we're going to show you some price action setups and some potential setups that you could take on a daily basis. We're going to also show price action techniques and give some education that makes you a better crypto trader all in about seven minutes today. Of course, this is not financial advice. You should use this information for educational purposes only. Also, be on the lookout for additional trading tutorials. If some of what I'm saying today kind of goes over your head, we will show you how to draw up these charts. We do offer a bit of a different perspective when it comes to technical analysis. We don't use very many indicators, if any, and we use strictly price action to understand where price is going and where it may want to be next. If you find this information valuable, go ahead, like and subscribe. Let's dive right in. So. As we called out last week, price has traded right back down into this order block and has been sitting in this range for quite some time, about four days now. Within this range, we understand that larger institutions are liking to accumulate here, right? Which is why you're hearing about some of these larger institutions actually buying Bitcoin right now. This is the area where they like to buy. How do we know? This is where they bought last time, okay? Just take a look at the price action and you can see that this is the launch pad right here, okay? So once you come back down to the launch pad, this is an area where either price could launch again or start to accumulate, maybe even push a little bit lower, but I don't foresee it going too much lower because there are some areas of price where it could go, areas of liquidity here and areas of imbalance in price, but I don't really think price wants to go there just yet. I think ultimately we're still in this range. So what are we looking at? Because when price is in a range, momentum indicators, things like RSI, they're very hard to trade with. So in order to really get a perspective on how to trade in a range, we have to zoom in. Right now we're on the daily chart. Let's go down to the hourly chart. On the hourly chart, let's zoom in a little bit more to get a better perspective of how things actually work within a range. So if price is in a range, I'm not using anything as far as an indicator to judge when I'm oversold or overbought. What I'm actually looking for are runs on liquidity. So what do we mean by that? What I want you to pay attention to are the equal highs, equal lows, both the farthest ones out, but also the ones interior to the range. Now, here's a rule that you want to write down. Whenever price breaks areas of equal highs and equal lows within a range, it has the right to reverse course. Let's just take this practical example here and we'll actually see with price where it's doing it now. But you see this equal high, 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 high here, right? There's about six of them. What do most traders think when they see these equal highs? Oh, this is an area of resistance, right? They'll take shorts from this area. Where do they leave behind shorts? Stop losses. So their stop losses may be here, they may be here. These are for the short traders. On the opposite end of that, there's traders who think that once price breaks above this, it's going to keep going. So they go long. So you have both sides of the market sitting above these equal highs. What does price like to do? Well, price is like a dog. It likes to sniff out liquidity. It likes to sniff out imbalance in the market. Once price gets to this area and it sees this setup, the liquidity sits here. What does it do? It spikes through. That spike through right there takes out all of the stop losses for traders who went short. And what does it do for the guys who are trading the breakout? It brings them into the trade and then it automatically reverses price on them to put them at a negative P&L. It takes both sides of the liquidity out of the market. These guys that went long, they'll sit in the trade, sit in the trade, sit in the trade. And eventually when they start to see these really big, hard red candles get printed, they get out or their stop loss gets hit here or here. So this is what the market does. It's engineered to go to both sides of a range and take liquidity. This is what you essentially call accumulation. It's not them accumulating Bitcoin. It's them accumulating your money as a trader. That's what accumulation really means. And so when you see this happening here, you can trade this. How do we trade it? Well, just like the equal highs, you can trade it at the equal lows. As soon as the liquidity gets grabbed, what does price do? You can see the example here, right? You have an equal low, equal low. Boom. As soon as price crashes through, it has the right to reverse and push higher. And just like they set folks up on the top side, they can set them up on the bottom side. And I'm looking at equal levels, interior and exterior to the range. As soon as price breaks through it, it has the right to reverse. Now, what are we seeing in current price action right now? And how do you actually play this? Well, if I'm actually trading this, I'm taking shorts at the top, longs at the bottom, but I'm confirming this with breaks of liquidity. Once I see equal highs get broken, I should be thinking short. Once I see equal lows get broken, I should be thinking long. My stop losses are placed very, very, very tight to this price action. Because if I am wrong, I want to be wrong with the smallest amount of risk possible. If I'm right, 
I don't want to bet the farm. I don't want to go ahead and put a lot of leverage on because I'm understanding that I'm dealing with the risky trade as it is at the moment. The majority of the weight is to the downside, but price may be getting ready to launch out of this range once this accumulation phase is done. Why do I think this? If I come to the futures, okay, and I look at open interest, it's essentially falling off of a cliff. Why? January has been very boring. Everything's been sideways. Nobody's been making money. All of the channels don't know what's going to happen with price. So naturally, if we don't know what's going on, right, if the influencers can't tell you what's going on, the open interest will die. Once the open interest dies, what do you think institutions do? Oh, they start to rub their hands together. The volume's been down. Everything's been down. We've accumulated as much as we want to. We can launch price from here. So what am I looking at? Once the open interest dies, once the volume gets low, once the market is contracted and squeezed, you're ready for an explosion. What also backs this up? The extreme fear in the fear and greed index. Bullish. Bullish, bullish, bullish. Everything's pointing up. As you can see, price is starting to break out of this range, but I'm not sure if it's going to launch out of this range. This looks very suspect, and it's happening at a time where New York is going to launch. You know, London's getting ready to close. Asia's closed. Markets are starting to transition. You're not going to see a ton of price action here. You may start to see some more towards the end of the day, end of the week. All right, so anticipate that. But as long as price is in this range here, this is how we will play it. Once price starts to move up, then we'll be able to pull things out like the Fibonacci retracement to get retracement levels. Then we'll be able to start to have more faith in our momentum indicators, etc. That's the long and short of it, guys. We will be bringing this type of content to the market every single day. If you like it, if you find this perspective useful and helpful for you, go ahead, like, and subscribe. We're going to bring tutorials to the building to give you guys deeper insight into how liquidity works, imbalances work, order blocks work, right? Swing high, swing lows, all of these different things that we indicate and mark off on our chart. We're going to bring you tutorials on how to draw this up yourself so that you can follow along as we start to call these levels out in the future. This is your boy Maestro. This is the long and short. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, share this with someone who you think may also find it beneficial. We're out of here. Take care.